Hi, my name is Carl Roth. I'm a software developer at Amazon. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about ongoing work we're doing to add PoE features into DentOS. So this is, um, we've already upstreamed some PoE support and this, we're gonna talk about the new features that we've been implementing. Uh, I wanted to thank our contributors and our partners. So uh, DNI and Acton supplied us with PoE capable hardware that we ported Dent to with their help. Um, they worked on the initial implementation of the PoE software that's that you can download now. And also Chris, my colleague at Amazon, uh, worked on the L2 support that I'll be talking about here. Okay, so just a brief, brief background. PoE is power delivery over Ethernet, so you deliver the power by putting a DC bias on the Ethernet wires. You don't need a power cord, so it simplifies some of your wiring. Um, there's uh, specs for it. It's governed by IEEE specs, so you can make sure that client devices and server devices talk to each other without causing mishaps. Um, practically speaking, when you build a PoE system, servers and clients, you're gonna buy chipsets from well-known vendors that have the support already baked into it according to the spec, so it's not that difficult. You, there's, they'll give you white papers on how to design it into your system. Again, so simplified cap cabling. Um, we care about it in the US because uh, you don't need an electrician's license to, to put in low voltage cable, <laughs> so it's a little bit cheaper for, for build out. Um, you also run into the case where when you build a PoE switch, uh, it's conceptually like a smart PDU where you can turn the ports on and off, but it's usually a computer in and of itself, so, and you get a lot better telemetry for devices that are connected. So for PoE to work, it connects, it's like when you're connecting your, your iPhone to the power cable, it does some voltage probes at the beginning, that's called L1 negotiation. So uh, a given device negotiates at a specific level, it says I need this much power, and then the, the the PSC, the, the server that's providing the power, it says this is your budget. You can use up, you can use up to that budget. Um, you can use less if you want. You don't have to give it back. Um, and there's, there's other requirements for how it needs to work at the, at the signaling level. So we have an implementation of it. This is, we call it L1 negotiation. It's part of the p uh, package in GitHub that you can get called PUED. So for layer one negotiation, there's different power levels that you can look at here. They're governed by different parts of the IEEE spec. Um, we have devices in the field that go all the way up to uh, type three, so up to 60 watts per port. So the stuff that's in GitHub right now is AF and AT support up to like 25 or 30 watts per port. Um, so if, if to go beyond that, there's a new part of the spec BT that people are implementing. That goes all the way up to 95, but we're, we're deploying 60 watt devices right now. So this is, this is important when we talk about the way that L, the L2 negotiation works, which is what we implemented next. So you do this negotiation, you get a particular power level, the device, the system has a total power budget. There's a you know, certain size power supply that's on the device. And you, you take part of that power budget and then eventually the server runs out of power and, and then devices can't, can't log in. So for L2 negotiation, you connect to the device and it talks over the network, it sends an LLDP packet and it's able to do very precise power negotiation that's more precise that's at, than what is at L1, at the L1 level. So, but in order to do that, the device that's connecting to it needs to be basically a computer or an embedded device. It needs to run a network stack. It needs to be able to talk LLDP. So this is what we did for this work. We added all the state machines and all the software to the server device so that we can talk to, talk L2 to the client devices for L2 power negotiation. Um, the reason that's important for us, so we're doing cost-reduced devices where uh, we want to use, we want to have as little power supply as possible to supply the devices that we're going to be deploying. So if you go back to this table, there's a big difference between class five and class six. You go from 45 up to 60 watts. That's a f like 15 watt, 25 watt difference. So depending on how you de design your devices, that, 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 that amount of power could be make or break. So when you do the L2 power negotiation, you can, you can get it down to 100 milliwatt increments instead of the 15 watts that you saw on that, on that table. Um, so we can, again, we could design devices that we deploy that have as small, power supply, as small a power supply as we can get away with. Uh, without L2, you, you, do the, you do the full power band for, for the L1. Um, I wanted to show an example here. Let's, let's have a hypothetical example. We have an eight port Power, power delivery device, eight port PSC. So it's gonna do up to class six, 60 watts per port. We're gonna design it with a 400 watt power supply. 
So if you do the math, that means that if you plug in all 60 watt devices, you tap out at six devices. So you've got, you can't plug in the last two devices. But let's say we're designing a topology where the devices we're plugging in don't actually need 60 watts. Maybe they only need 45 watts. So if you do the math, you can plug in all eight devices and you can power them off of one single 400 watt power supply. So here's what happens at L1. So you plug in all the devices, they, the two chipsets talk to each other, they both, they all negotiate at 60 watts. The first six devices, they're doing great, but at that point, the switch is delivering a budget of 360 watts. So you don't have enough left for the seventh device to power up. So you're, you're done. So you basically wasted two of your ports. So if you do L2 negotiation, if the devices are able to go in and later on say I actually only need 45 watts, they'll go in and you'll see here the, the fifth and sixth devices, they've started to do L2 negotiation, they, they lower their power budget, and now you have enough budget for the seventh device to turn on. And that, that process happens over time and then eventually all eight devices can power up. So in order to do this, there's software support needed. Uh, there's a user land application that we wrote that's part of this PoE software that does the state machine. So you need to be able to look at link state changes. You need to be able to look at LDP packets and basically do all this power negotiation. So um, there's also some configurability that goes into there. You need to be able to deal with devices that aren't, aren't necessarily L2 capable. So, but generally speaking, the way the system works is it does the L1, then the network comes up, it does the L2, and then, then you have your final state. Um, we added, so the PoE software that's already in GitHub includes the daemon, PoED, that's the how. So Sartura talked about that also. There's multiple ways of implementing the how, but the one that we have here is, is Python-based. Um, there's a CLI that we use to, to control it. That's also part of the existing software. And then we added this third piece in the middle, LDP PoED. So it needs to talk to the LDP daemon on, this, on the device to look at LDP frames. Then it also needs to look at link state events. So you can review this in your spare time, but the diagram is a little, a little tight here. But you see on the left, there's a guy, a person configuring the devices. They can configure the CLI. They can unplug and unplug, plug and unplug devices on the bottom. The boxes on the left are the existing implementation, which is layer one. And then on the right, when it starts speaking network packets, it's able to do more precise negotiation. And it needs to talk to, on the far right, there's this LODP daemon. That's just the standard um, Linux LODP daemon that it, that it talks to. Um, so we have initial support for BT-capable devices from a device provided by Acton. Um, I've heard rumors that you can go down on the exhibit floor and see one of these things. Um, it's like, again, again, it's supplied by the out-of-the-box LODP software that's in Debian. Um, it's compliant with some of the BT clauses, not all of them, but it's enough to power up the devices that we cared about. Um, again, this is always uh, supplemental to the, the actual wire level negotiation. If you plug in like a VoIP phone that can't do LODP, it'll, it'll still work. Um, I, I believe the BT spec requires that anything that does BT also needs to be able to do the, the, the LODP frames too. Um, code's, pretty, code's relatively simple. It, LODP PUED is just a C, a C agent that runs in the background, um, monitors link state, monitors LODP frames. So we have to, conceptually, there's one state machine per port to manage it because each, each port is independent. Um, again, this diagram is a little too small. You can look at it in your spare time and zoom in. Um, but this is what the, what the state machine would look like when we add in LODP support. So, Roughly speaking, going from left to right, you start out with wire level negotiation, then you bring up your networking stack in the middle, and then as you go over to the right, you're negotiating LDP frames. Uh, let's see, we have some message passing here that you can zoom in on to see uh, that talks about all the different actors in the system. Um, but again, it's just a, we're looking forward to, up, to upstreaming it. It's just a C-based agent. And so, um, what else do we need to do here? Uh, so right now, the devices that we support are micro semi based, but any, any of these uh, PUE chipsets that's microcontroller based is gonna be easily, be easily supported by Dent. Um, all, of, all of the boxes that we're cur currently looking at right now, the port state is not 
it's not interrupt driven, so we have to pull, and we I think we use a, a Netlink socket to do that. So that's a matter for system design. It's not a really dent specific thing. Um, we are still in the process of upstreaming it. So um, for all the reasons that were cited earlier, upstreaming is not easy. Uh, in addition, this particular parts of this package were written in Python, and the Python version doesn't agree with what's currently in dent. So we need to resolve that. But that's for us to fix. So anyway, thank you. I can take any questions that anyone has. Cool, thank you. Uh, the way we designed the LDP part of it, um, it at least for me, it seems like that part still needs to be in user land because it needs to needs to actually get packets um, from from an LDP agent. So when it actually interfaces to the hardware, I think that part is agnostic. So if at some point in the future, if, if a kernel-based HAL for PoE magically appears, we'd be happy to use it. For now, we're we're doing the. You, Folks that have seen the implementation, it's kind of a lame Python thing that tickles the I, the I squared C to get access to the PoE hardware. Yes, that could definitely be in the kernel. Cool. Thank you.